Hi everyone, uh, my name is Milos Popovic. I'm an Associate Professor of Electrical Engineering at Boston University. My research group is in the BU Photonic Center and I'm also a, a co-founder and advisor to iLabs. Um, appreciate the invitation to share my experiences interacting with uh, AIM. I've had a, a great and productive interaction uh, working with the AIM Photonics team and the uh, Foundry team at uh, uh, the SUNY Fab in Albany over the last five to six years uh, in a couple of different contexts. So on the one hand, uh, my academic research group has done uh, about five tape outs in the AIM uh, multi-project way for silicon photonics uh, fabrication runs on a variety of uh, uh, projects of different sizes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we also collaborated closely on a $20 million uh, DARPA program to create a uh, custom uh, monolithic electronics photonics platform in bulk CMOS. And so I'll say a little bit about both. Um, a little bit about me, uh, I have about 20 years of experience in uh, silicon photonics. Um, uh, I'm a designer and students in my group work on the conception, uh, design, implementation, demonstration of new device concepts uh, in integrated photonics and their integration in um, systems on chip and the demonstration of those. So we primarily work with foundries. Uh, the extent of our involvement in fabrication is uh, detailed interaction with foundry engineering teams on defining processes and, and the like. Um, so I, I brought a little bit of show and tell. Uh, here you can see a uh, project uh, in a passive AIM photonics fabrication run. This is a 50 millimeter squared chip which shows a tiled array of optical phased array uh, beamformers designed, uh, funded on a, a government project to create a scalable optical aperture for LiDAR. Uh, the idea here is that um, there is a passive structure that can steer in both X and Y dimensions based on only wavelength. And to accomplish this, you need to guide light through this uh, serpentine waveguide structure back and forth through the entire uh, tile. So here's a top view of, uh, of one of these fabricated tiles, about a square millimeter in size. And the important thing is that it takes five centimeters of waveguide to thread through the structure. And so at the outset of this project, it wasn't obvious whether uh, silicon photonics uh, foundry platforms support sufficiently low losses to support structures like this. So this was the purpose of uh, our first tape out into one of these passive um, platforms. And um, so, we, we do use uh, slightly wider waveguide, multi-mode waveguides, a couple of microns wide, uh, operated in the single mode regime. But we measured uh, less than 0 0.06 dB per centimeter loss, uh, which I think either is or was a, a record in, in the standard 220 nanometer uh, silicon on insulator foundry platforms, and uh, was actually lower than we needed to, to, um, to have these uh, um, optical phase arrays function. So we're still developing uh, these for both LiDAR applications and spectrometers, but uh, the fact that such low waveguide losses uh, were possible, which to a large degree depends on the foundry process, there's some um, control that also the designer has, uh, led us to also pursue these in, for other applications. So here you can see a ring resonator uh, formed from a similar structure of a wide waveguide uh, tapered down to a single mode bend. And we were able to um, measure Qs exceeding seven and a half million um, intrinsic, which uh, again is or was uh, a record, at least at the time, uh, and allows you uh, to, to pursue new regimes of operation and, and applications. So in our case, this was for a small project investigating uh, RF photonics for space-based applications. And we uh, use these resonators to build uh, bandpass filters. Here's a second order filter with two uh, resonators and uh, so we built 200, 400, 600 uh, megahertz wide uh, bandpass filters with sub dB to a few dB insertion loss. Um, and actually we also built fourth and sixth order that are not shown uh, here. So this was uh, funded by a uh, internal company R&D uh, program and also by uh, some government support. And um, so this maybe takes me to make a few comments about what I found important and uh, was helpful with using the AIM uh, MPWs. Um, one uh, important factor was uh, that it's great to, to have a fixed calendar schedule of three to four 
uh, fabrication runs per year, uh, several months apart. That means anytime uh, I, I start a project, I know within a few months there's going to be a, a tape out. Uh, there's sort of visibility a, a year and a half to two ahead. And that's also very important uh, in the sense that at proposal time, I can see basically uh, what the cadence is going to be. And with uh, a few months in between in a development uh, project, you can count on basically uh, staging it so that every second tape out, you can use the results, uh, experimental results of the previous one to feed the next design. And that's something that's important as well. Um, the other thing with the, uh, was the very fast turnaround of a, a few months, uh, passives even shorter than actives. And that was important for us because for a project, like I mentioned here with, uh, based on, let's say IRAD funds, that might be uh, one calendar year exploratory project. Uh, sometimes you need to do design, fabrication, and even get some experimental results within one calendar year. And so that was also uh, important for us. So um, next, uh, let me show you uh, a interaction on this uh, uh, large DARPA program, the DARPA phone program that ran for several years to demonstrate CPU to memory interconnects uh, based on the monolithic integration of electronics and photonics. So we worked uh, closely with the, the uh, SUNY uh, fab at Albany uh, and the uh, foundry team there to um, create a derivative of the 10, uh, IBM 10 LPE uh, 65 nanometer bulk CMOS process, a 300 millimeter uh, foundry process. And uh, one impressive thing is that uh, this research fab can run um, the, uh, a version of this commercial process and then create a derivative of this process for uh, silicon photonics that includes monolithically integrated polysilicon um, photonics. So here you can see a process module inserted where there is a um, undercladding oxide uh, added next to bulk CMOS transistors. So this is not silicon on insulator, but, SO, uh, but um, a bulk CMOS. And polysilicon optimized for photonics because the gate polysilicon of uh, transistors was too lossy, and then a shared back end. So this is uh, a very advanced process actually not in use yet, but um, processes like this would be, for example, used to integrate silicon photonics in the most advanced process nodes like FinFET process nodes, which are uh, bulk CMOS. So uh, that's it from me and uh, thank you very much.